A hey, peace and blessings to you. My name is Jerry B. I am the entree musician, and so is this radioactive brother who is on the left of your screen. I'm talking about <laughs> from Harlem to Helsinki, Yo <laughs> Tex, Teddy Pendergrass. Uh -oh. oh my God, we're getting uh -oh. into the real deal. So Nitty number gritty. number new. Okay, the hardest working shirt. man in show business. This the is original it. Original soul man. <laughs> before you make I me say, blush. Oh no! Listen, before I say his name, I have to say this: we uh, we have interviewed some icons. We have had conversations with Grammy winners, but we have never reached the level that we're reaching today with my friend and brother, oh Alton man, Deanna Smith. This is the dude right here. <laughs> What? You sound like, look at you sound like Don King now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're the greatest son. <laughs> look, I, thank you, know, you man. It, thank you. Listen, the show has to begin with what don't you do? Okay, and where hey. haven't you been? I mean, because that's it. Auth you know author, what's interesting? new I, book I coming out, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got to talk about that. We got a few things to talk about that. Wait, 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 wait. Before you get into it, actor, yeah. right? Actor. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Singer extraordinaire, producer, recording artist. I don't know, six, seven albums. I lose count. No, I mean, well, it's one really official album. The other things are those things you put out as you try to get to that official oh album. God. But, but they out. Like, you know what? Yeah, good point. But they out and they climbing. So, yeah. If it has anything to do with creativity, I'm about I love the creative process. I love it. Writing, recording, working with somebody, advising somebody what I think they should or shouldn't do. And I always say, it's just my opinion, but... I just, I just love it. We're, we're, we're born into this is in our DNA, Jerry. Ain't nothing else we'd rather do. You know what I'm saying? We can't help I ourselves. I we agree. can't help ourselves. I now, agree. You know, I'm gonna tell you something. In, re in regards to what you said about where haven't I been? Yeah. I had that conversation with Terry this morning. Terry sends her love, by the way. Um, I said I haven't been to Japan. Mm -hmm. Been to China, Hong Kong, but I haven't been to Japan. I haven't been to Africa. Okay. And I haven't been to Jamaica. Haven't been. But to Jamaica. Norway, Switzerland, Russia. Finland, uh, Dubai, Indonesia, Maldives, Indonesia. Indonesia. You name it. You name it. And you know what I find in all these different cultures, Jerry, and I tell it to young entertainers all the time. Don't nobody care about all the riffs and runs and blah, 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 and all that old bullshit. Right? Can you entertain them? They just want to be entertained. That's right. If you entertain yeah. them, they will come back to see you again and bring their friends. Especially if you got a residency. Their friends yeah. come to town. Oh, we gonna, are you going to love this guy. And that's all you want. That's right. I also tell, and here's a, here's a common pet peeve of mine. Jerry, we come up in the same era. Yes. I have never seen, but I went to see, and I've seen the greatest. We'll talk about that as well. Absolutely. But what's this thing with having music stands and laptops and phones <laughs> on stage? Reading, as a singer, you got one job. Learn the goddamn lyrics. You got one job. If you don't know the <laughs> lyrics, ad lib or don't sing it. But I told somebody, when you're looking at that computer, you are not connecting yeah, with your yeah, audience. Yeah, that's you got to right. make eye contact. You got to wink. You got to smile. You got to point. You got to talk about his shirt in that's a nice right. way. Talk about how beautiful she is. You got to connect with your audience. And everywhere I go, everybody's got laptops and, and phones on stage reading lyrics from them. And that's just, it sickens me. <laughs> Sick. In addition to how they're dressed. Don't get me started on something. No, wait, 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 wait. See, now, you, you, now, see, you're still in my, my question. Because I thought that that was the most important question I could ask you. I had a list of questions written oh, down. I'm sorry. And I thought, wait a minute. I thought, wait a minute. The most important question, because, yeah. again, from Harlem to Helsinki, for real. Okay. <laughs> but the wardrobe, man. <laughs> The my threads, mother, man. Come on. My dear, sweet, <laughs> sainted mother. God bless her soul. She told me a long time ago, son, don't nothing look better than a well-dressed black man. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you, said, you're doing it, bro. You must always be well-dressed, well-groomed. Make sure you smell good. You look good. If your drawers or your T-shirt or your socks got a hole in them, you throw them away. She, I mean, she would drill this into my head. You know what she said? She, I don't know why she was telling me this as a kid. And boy... Don't you ever get into bed with a woman and you got your socks on. You don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> Wait, so Jerry, Jerry. That was interesting. I, yeah, but uh, you got, you know, when I used to go as a kid, uh, every yeah. Saturday, my mother would give me, I started in 1970-71. Stevie Wonder, Betty Wright, and Five Stair Steps, okay? My, my mother give me $2. A mm -hmm. dollar to buy a bag of donuts from Georgie's Pastry Shop. It's no longer there. And a dollar for admission. I'd get there early. I'd sit in the same seat in the front row. And I would see the greatest. 
We'll talk about that. But when them curtains would open, it didn't matter. They didn't have no sex tape scandals, no, no who's dating who, whatever. It didn't matter where their records were in the chart or how much money they had or how many cars they had. They came out on that stage clean. They looked like superheroes. The only thing missing was capes. And if you saw the Delphonics, you got capes. Okay? <laughs> they wore capes. Right. So, I mean, I see people nowadays. I go see shows nowadays. And these people look like they live under a bridge in a mm -hmm. box. It's like they're dressed like they're homeless. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you had that on all day long, huh? You know what I'm saying? And, and right, off me, the, you gotta, right huh? out the right, right out the uh, hotel room onto the stage. That's it. It's like, come on, man. You got to look a certain way, dress a certain way, because you want to give the audience that illusion of you want to make them feel better. I went to see one entertainer one time, and I was just better than he was. I won't say his name because I know him. But like, my man, this, you're playing Radio City. You got him a sweater and some slacks. Mm. It's a show. Did you think this was sound check? Mm. It's a show, Negro. You mm. know what I'm saying? Here, take my suit jacket. I'm like, man, I demand the dramatics, the shot. Yeah. These guys will come out in outfits that Lord have mercy. Just well, so. well, let me ask you about that. Let's let's yeah. go and let's double down on that. Do you think then that is the genre? Is it because it's a, a certain genre like soul RB? Definitely the traditionals. It was all no wrinkles anywhere. No problem. Exactly, but do exactly. you think is it is it the genre or is it the times? What do you think has changed that? You know what? You know when it started changing, and I hate to blame everything on this, and not that I am, but I, but there, there's the correlation is there. When hip hop came uh, came on board, now rappers they supposed to dress a certain. I can understand that, but that you started seeing R and B singers getting on TV in jeans and sneakers. You didn't see that before, right? Or baseball caps, right? You know, and right. I don't know. To me, if you're an R and B soul singer. You should dress a shit. I know, and God bless his brother's fantastic. I know, and I first heard Anthony Hamilton's voice. I was like, wow. And then I saw Anthony Hamilton. I was like, wow. Now, yeah. he has since changed up his look, and we've seen him with Super. The first he came on, he looked like, come mm -hmm. on, bro. You sing too well to be looking like that, man. Well, I, think it I just was think the, he should be dressed. I think it was the hip-hop culture, you know, because yeah, it's the yeah, culture yeah. and the air that they were born in. You know, I mean, when you went through Motown, there was a there was a factory. I mean, they trained you how to interview, how to sit, how to dress. I mean, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. the same thing, you know, I mean, not that Stax Records had a factory, but there was a persona, uh, Philadelphia International. You were just not going to go out there any our kind best. of way. You look at some of those old Soul Train clips. The OJs had on outfits that were just it's phenomenal. Pristine. Phenomenal. I remember watching, and this may seem weird to say, not that I'm casting any doubts about anybody's whatever. But I remember watching Ronald Ozzy walk on stage at the garden one time. And I said to myself, that man is beautiful. And then I had to check myself because I'd never made a statement like that. There was no Understood. reason for me to say that. I was into yeah. girls. I'm like, that man yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What he had yeah. on was stunning. And it made me always want to dress. I got some funny pictures of me, man. I used to go to school dressed like that because all them sneaker stores on 125th Street now, yeah, they used to be clothing stores of pimps, players, hustlers, and the entertainers that the Apollo bought their outfits from. I so see. I'd come home, Ma, I saw the suit, the shots had on. Could you get it for me? Boy, I'm not sitting here to school, no purple sequin suit. What's wrong with, okay, well, can I get black or red? And every night then she'd break down and get me something. Matter of fact, I have them displayed in my apartment, a few choice selections from back in the day. Word but up. You know, this is how I went to school. I wasn't wearing Converse and Chuck Taylors. I was wearing shit like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, please note the suede and the patent leather. Word Pardon up. me, sir. Pardon me, sir. <laughs> shit like with rhinestones on them, Jerry. My man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> I still Look have at you. Look at you. These were on stage at James Brown and Master Square Garden. I will always have them. <laughs> my, my, my. Now, that's why, you know, I mean, that's why you were set up. And you, you're right. Your mom set you up at eight years old. James you know, Brown, an first yeah. introduction, right? Man, let me tell you. You know what? My father passed away uh, in 1968. Mm -hmm. And we were moping around the house for a while. You know, just sad. Me, my sister, my mother. And one night my mother said, okay, look, we got to get out. We got to go do something. And now before that, yeah, we'd been other places, Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, or or uh the Thanksgiving Macy's Day Parade. Those are largely white affairs. A lot of white right, folks. Right. You know what right, I'm right, saying? Right, right. She took us to the Apollo Theater. I'm like, what is this? What is going on here? Black people coming in dressed like kings and queens. The air was alive. I'm like, oh. okay, okay. Then all of a sudden, da, da, the curtains open. 
The band is standing there like soldiers in crisp tuxedos. James Brown walks out in a royal blue ruffled shirt, matching pants, black patent leather shoes. I can see it with a silver buckle and his diamond ring sparkled all the way up to where we were sitting. He said, uh, with your bad self and started out saying loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm like, man, whatever this is, whatever this is, right. this is what I want to do. I was stuck. That ch- that's that moment. It sounds corny like a movie script, but yeah. literally my life changed. Wow. He became my father figure from that yeah. point on. And, you know, we all know the, the corny, you know, elderly James about getting in all sorts of mess, but sure. he was our first unofficial black president. That's right. M- millionaire. Things he was telling us. Yeah. Businessman. I mean, you know, right on point. But, but even more so, it's the things he was, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. I'm going to get it myself. Uh, don't be a dropout. That's he right. would teach us things that, man, like that our fathers would say to us. So, man, my mother, she set me up to win. With, with that, I, it was, and from that moment on, I was at the Apollo Theater all the time. And boy, do I have some. The second book I have coming out is called Tales from the Front Row. Oh, Jim, right. I, I still have all my, t- I have every ticket stuff, every concert I ever went to, mm. every autograph. So I'm like, let me tell the stories. I used to come up in the Apollo and write down who was on the show what they wore, what they sang, what they said. And I still have this in my 12-year-old handwriting. So I'm like, this is a book here. Wow. This is the book. So That's yeah, beautiful. I, let me tell you something. I saw the best. Uh, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, the Spinners, and uh, some local group on one mm-hmm. show for a dollar? Come on, man. Now, I know time changed, but quality is quality. Quality you know is saying? quality. And they sang like it was, I mean, that the world was coming to an end. Really? There was no Pro Tools, Jerry. There was no lip syncing, no backing tracks. There was you and your God-given talent. So I saw That's them right. at their best. I saw them they were hoarse. I saw them they were high. And I saw how they did whatever it was they had to do. Yeah. That's how you learn. Because right. now you, you, you can't learn nothing, you know? My I was in um, some country, and this little musician comes to me, oh, oh, Black Eyed Peas, great band, great band. They're the best. Don't you think so? Don't you? Son, I I um I saw Earth, Wind & Fire open up a slide in the Family Stone. Please give me ten feet. Back away from me, okay? Don't make eye contact unless I tell you to. You kidding me, <laughs> Jerry? I saw Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Keep your head to the sky, era. Yeah. They hadn't even blown up. Yeah. Open up for Slime the Family Stone. Yeah. Yeah. I saw yeah. Prince first show here yeah. for seven dollars in, in a club as small as my studio. I'm so it's like, come on, I'm jaded, man. I'm sorry, I'm jaded. No, I think I am too. I really, I really do because you can't put that on, you know, a young kid at seven, eight, and nine years old, and then give them this and think they should be falling out over it. And I, no, I, I just don't understand it. I mean, you, you know, know you saw the Hotter Than July tour, uh, Stevie Wonder's Hotter Than July tour. I mean, what, what, what can you do to a twelve-year-old? And then you think, okay, well, it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better, and you see. Some let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you about hotter than July. I was sitting up in uh, uh, in in Manhattan Community College, you know, ho humming through class, whatever. That just wasn't my thing. And this kid was over me and says, "Hey, man, you know Stevie One is down at the garden tonight. He is, yeah. You want to go? Yeah." And I ain't never went back to school. It was a hotter than July tour. That night, he also sang "Let's Get Serious" to show you. Yeah, I gave it to Jermaine, but I wrote this <laughs> just so you know. Okay, man, please don't get me started on Stevie. You know, honestly, oh. but no, wait a minute. You, you, you were, uh, you know, truly, and this is not hype, but you were James Brown. He was your mentor, so you were his uh, student. But he didn't want anybody to drop out of school. Now, how did that happen? Well, see, he didn't, of course, he didn't know about that. Let me, and let me okay. clear the record. Okay, okay, because yeah. I need to, yeah. you know, yeah. I know that was him on, on, on the one for education. Very much so. But you know what? And, and it's not that he, like, like he and I were close friends I could call him. No, it's just whenever he came to town, I was that kid that was around. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And I just got blessed to be able to be around him so many times. Gotcha. It's, it's ridiculous. So, but no, he didn't know about that because I'm sure he would have, he would have, nah, that's not the move. He you know? So, you. Uh, yeah. But yeah. now, so after, after the show though, you said no more school. What grade were you I in? I just, uh, first year of college. It just was wasn't it. for me. And mm-hmm. you know, there's times I wish that maybe I had completed just so I had that, but I'm happy doing what I do, living a life I live now. It's feast of famine, but I yeah. love it, man. There's nothing else I would ever, I never thought to quit. And, you know, and out of my friends, everybody coming up, uh, I was the last one to be involved because I wasn't the most talented singer. They, they're still better singers than me, those guys, but none of them kept at it. I never thought to quit. I didn't know enough to quit. 
Mm. Like, I love doing this. I'll write a song with anybody. I'll sing on anything. All I can mm. do is the best I can do. You know what I mean? So And you do it. And you do I it do my you best. Do <laughs> you do it and you do I it. I do my do best, it. brother Jerry. Well, hey, hit me with some questions, man. I, I'm sorry. I'm just talking. I'm glad yeah, to dude, talk to I, I don't even know where to start. I just, I'm just going to let you go with it. <laughs> the, the thing about it is, it's interesting because, you know, I mean, you were burning New York up. You are a product of Harlem. Spanish Harlem is where you grew up. Spanish Harlem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and so you you really sopped into the sound of what was happening. You learned from the masters. You saw yeah. it, but then you became this international icon. What what was the transition? What got you overseas? What was you the know name? how that went? Um, doing a bunch of shows around New York. Uh, uh, then I, I had a, a twice a month thing at BB King's Club. You know, but just performing any and every on anybody's show that I could get on, trying to make the best of it, and then. A uh, club in China, House of Blues and Jazz, uh, they had a band canceled. And the booking agent there called around everywhere trying to find somebody. She called, uh, um, Al- oh, God, uh, please don't let me forget his name. I believe it's not Alan Klein. That's the mm. yeah, I know devil who I'm Sam Klein. Cook and all, but, um mm. Oh, man, I- I'm so embarrassed. Is Alan that- from the bottom line. He The bottom line was his club. Miles Davis, Springsteen, Prince, everybody performed at the bottom line in New York. Yeah. And he, um, Alan Pepper. And Alan Pepper said, I know an act that's good. I'll send him, you know, she recommended. And uh, she called me and said, look, uh, would you like to perform? Blah, blah, blah. I said, sure. Uh, it's for three months. Sure. Where's it at? And when he said, when he said it to me, I said the same thing that everybody would tell me for the next 10 years when I told them I lived in China. He said, it's in China. I went, China, China? Because you, you can't conceive of that. You think of China, China, China. China, he says, yes, China, China, Shanghai, China. Do you want to do it? And in those two seconds, I thought about the fact that nobody in my family has ever flown or been outside the country. Wow. I said, yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll go for it. So I went there. It's the house of blues and jazz. Don't talk to the people. Don't touch the people. Just get on stage. Do your set. And I did that for about a week or so. And then one night, I'm just like, hey, man, we all this blues they got me doing. Uh, we got to rev it up. Sex machine. You know what I'm saying? And from yeah. that moment on, from that moment on, you couldn't get in the club. You couldn't wow. get in the club. It was packed. I'm bringing people up to dance. People just want to be entertained. Yeah, yeah. And I went there to do one gig. I wound up living there for 10 years. Yeah, I, I see that. I know. For 10 years. <laughs> and the funny thing is, yeah, and, you know, and people from all over the world will come are in Shanghai, China. So I'll come off stage. We have a club in, in Sweden. Would you? Sure. That's how I began to travel everywhere else all over the world because, um, you know, everybody says, come to our country. We love you. So that's how this international thing came up. Right. And the funny thing is, I don't know if your mother said this. I think it was a, a common black mother threat. But my mother used to always say, keep it up, Carlton. I'm going to put your little ass on a slow boat to China. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever hear that? Did you ever hear that threat? And that kind of fact, that's a song from the 40s, a slow boat. You're going to be right. for a long time. <laughs> so there'd be times I'd finish doing the show at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'd just walk around because I'm hyped. I'm like, damn, ma. I live in China. I actually live. Now, I'm going to tell you something. My daughter, Misa, I have her and her mother come visit me everywhere. Mm-hmm. At one point, I came home, which this is just an interesting t- statistic. I came home, and she was in a new school. And I went to the school, and they're like, oh, hello, Mr. Smith. Even the kids are, hello, Misa's father. And I said, uh-huh. Terry, what's going on? Why are these people so strange? She says, Carlton, they didn't think you existed. They thought you were another black man in jail, left his family, whatever. Oh, yeah. Other kids are, my mother and father come to get me. Where's your father at? Oh, he's in Russia. He's in China. To little black kids, I hate to say the Spanish kids, that's another planet. That's they true. couldn't conceive of that. That's you know true. what I'm saying? So I remember thinking, wow. So that's why I want my daughter to go everywhere and experience all these different cultures. And she has. It's been a trip, but she, but yeah. she has, man. My so, goodness. yes. Ten <laughs> years in China. That's, so that started it. Me going to China and entertaining so well that people from other, you got to come to our country. We would love you there. So that's how that that's how that happened. Tell me what it's like working with the band. So you're coming in, um, you know, they have the uh, music already on point, or you know, Woo! what's the, any disconnections on from you know from rehearsals Woo! to the stage? Woo! Usually, <laughs> I want to bring my own band because they know me. They've been through the trials and tribulations with me because I'm from the James Brown School. Hey, pay attention, watch what I'm doing, you know, and right. be on point. Look good. When I've been forced to work with other bands. It's, it's been difficult because they don't know about the break it down, break it down. Plop. They don't yeah. know about that. Right, right. Or the drummer, I'm like, okay, all right, let's do such a, let's go. 
hey drummer, you gotta count the song in, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't know to do that. They don't know dynamics, right? showmanship, like we know. They just wanna play the song. I'm like, no, no. Wow. I was in Taipei. I had to work at the house. I was able to bring two of my musicians and I had to work with two of their musicians. Mm -hmm. So every other week, I'm coming in with five or six new songs to put in the show. Yeah. And just getting met with all this pushback. So finally, the, the guitar player said me, Carlton, you know, let me tell you something. The young lady that was here before you for three months, you know, we did the same 16 songs every night in the same order. I said, and you didn't want to kill yourself? <laughs> Shh, here, blow your brains out. Didn't you get into it to be a musician and you want to work? And from that moment on, he got it. He understood. Oh my Come God. on, man. You just be on your right. toes. And you know, I'm calling, I'm starting to call out anything. One night the band made a bet with me. Why well, put together setters? He's gonna change it anyway. Right. And exactly. never so it became a big bet backstage. We bet you can't stick to a set list. I said, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna send all your home broke tonight. Jerry, I was rigid, I was on point. By the ninth song, they were begging me to change it. Because they were just like, Okay, okay, man, change up. Because, you know, it, it became too rigid. I said, ah, you like, they didn't know that they liked having to be on point. Right, Rich. exactly. I'm not going to do it the same way that it go, you know, so. That's right. Man, musicians, you know, that they they don't know, again, they don't come up, and I hate to sound like we're 100 years old, but Jay, they don't, they don't come up in our era. Our, sure. uh, we saw dynamics and showmanships sure. and segues and medleys, but they don't know that. They do a song. Then they stop and they want to talk on stage for five minutes. Hey, no. hey, keep the show rolling. Keep exactly. it, keep it moving. You know, so exactly right. There's been all sorts of disconnects, but when it works, or when they finally get it after hating me for a month, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Now you, now you see what I'm talking about. This is what I mean. <laughs> what I'm so, saying. So tell me about the language barrier. Then you, you do you travel with a translator as well, or or how does that no, work? No, man. This is the translator right here. You know, heart to heart. Uh, you, you know, I've been in situations with people that speak absolutely no English, and I speak no Chinese, no no Turkish, whatever. But you find a way to communicate. You know, you find a way to get your point across. Mm -hmm. A smile means everything. Right. And if you genuinely have good will and good intention, for the most part, people will pick that up. That's good. There, there are uh, idiots everywhere in the world, but for the most part, people will will pick that up. And I, I have great friendships with people. You, you know what? You can be in countries and just show you the power of music, Jerry. Mm -hmm. They speak no English, but they'll sing along with every word of my girl. That's good. Right. Huh? That's good. That's right. I say, can I count it off like a sex machine? They will get up and start dancing. Get up, <laughs> get on up, uh. get on up. <laughs> That's the power of music. Let, let me tell you this. I don't know yeah. if I told you this before. My first week in Turkey, I'm walking down what is the Broadway of Turkey. And uh, I don't even know if you can see that. Let me let me cue it up. I walk down what is the Broadway of Turkey. Yeah. And three white girls walk by me. They're Turkish, but they're white. Mm -hmm. And I hear one of them say, nigger. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm walking. You know, you you know, you walk in a minute. It takes a minute for things to reach. I'm like, that's going to be a nigger. Mm -hmm. So I go, I go over to her. And I wasn't going to hit her or anything. But I was going to ask, you know, hey, why would you say something so mean? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I tapped on the shoulder for the turn around. So I could ask her. She turned around. She went, <gasps> Nigga, nigga! She's yelling this, she's screaming this out loud. Her friends are, and I realized they are thrilled that I'm even speaking to them. I'm like, am I being pranked? <laughs> and then it dawned on me, Jerry. That's it dawned on me, hip hop, because the other couple of black guys oh. that were around there. Oh wait, it gets deep. The other couple of black guys that were around there were clearly African and what they had on. I got in the sweatpants, the hoodie, the sneakers, because it's my off time. So to them, that's one of those niggers that make those records. I couldn't even be mad at it because you could tell she didn't know. That's right. Yeah, no. That's Jerry, right. I said, right. no one in the world is going to believe this. So I said, I got to take this. I don't know if you can even. This young lady just saw me in the street and she said, nigga? Nigga? Yeah, see? Say it again. Right. <laughs> Un unbelievable. Okay. I had to take it. She was, she was trying to do West Side, but her little pudgy fingers yeah. couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> she be, she's my friend to this day. Wow. After a month, she began to follow me on Facebook, cutting all my songs. And after a month, she sent me an English uh, email in broken English. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know no. Please, well, somebody must have said you called him what? Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. And breath the correction. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God it was me because I could have turned out. So I'm on stage in Izmir. Yeah. Turn the place out, man. I had everybody in there sweating. Yeah. This guy comes up to me after the show. Oh, my friend. 
oh, you are so good. Your voice, I love the way your people sing. When I come back, I want to be born in naked. Can I take a picture with you? I couldn't be mad because I could tell they don't know. You understand it, yeah. And quiet as it's kept, it's our fault for letting that word get out into pop culture like it did. Yeah, We always yeah, said it behind yeah, closed yeah, doors. Yeah, yeah, we right. should have never let it get out there like that. That's right. So I hear it all. So I couldn't even be mad. But yeah, that language barrier, that linguistic, I, I don't pay no attention. I just deal. I look them in the eye, shake the hand back when we can still shake hands. Now you get a fist bump. Well, of course. But, um, and, and, and it works. It works. I've had very few, if any, real problems and situations. Mm. You just show love and put good energy out there, and it comes back. You know, you're yeah. going to meet knuckleheads everywhere you go. Yeah. You know, you meet more of them here amongst your own kind. Amen? Yeah. You know? Amen, amen. Don't get me started. Amen, I'm sorry, Jerry. No, I, I'm so, no, you are I'm so glad to be able to talk, man, with somebody who understands, you know? So it's go ahead, ask it's something else. Work. Yes, I don't know. Yes, what, yes. I don't know what to ask you, man. I, I really, I, I really don't. It was the wardrobe. Well, it was the shoes you put on LinkedIn the other day. I was like, okay. Check, check this out. <laughs> uh, I, I kept a diary of everything that had anything to do with music. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother, when I was fifteen and a half, my mother decided she was going to move to Columbia, South Carolina, to take care of her parents who were dying. Mm-hmm. I said, Mom, I do not want to live in South Carolina. Please, I want to stay in New York because I want to be a star. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, she let me stay. How, she was already, how old were you? How old were you? 15 and a half. There you go. I was already going to the Apollo Theater by myself, 10, 11, because she just always knew my son is covered. It's going to be all right. I was working. I was going to Julia Richmond High School and working part-time at Arista Records. Mm. Rent on this three-bedroom apartment was $100 a month. I was able to have, I said, Mom, let me stay. You know I don't get in no trouble. I don't do nothing but try to dress up. Uh, to listen to music and talk to girls. Same shit I do now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so she said, the fan was like, Corrine, okay, ain't nothing changed but the weather, Jerry. <laughs> Corrine, you gonna let that boy stay there? My son don't get in no trouble. And I've been living by myself, you know. Uh, and so I used to keep a diary of everything, music or everything, whatever. And the funny thing is, I still have all those papers. And uh, some of those people I know now. So I, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll call somebody that don't say, hey, man, what were you doing April 23rd, 1976? How the hell I know? I'll right. tell you. You were appearing at such and such and such. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I wrote it down. Right. You know? Uh, so it's, it's crazy, man. Man, that's a... I, 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 nah, I'll tell a story some other time. But anyway, uh, so I got this book because I've got a million crazy stories like this. So, so this I, is so going to be I'm, two. The first one comes out in the spring, right? And that's the one I'm talking about. It's called All That Matters Is right? The Music. But All you, That Matters. Earlier, huh? you mentioned the second one, so I, I'm gonna thinking the Which is going to be Tales from the one. Front Row. Yeah, exactly no, no, I'm going right. to get that other one off. Uh, it's going to be Tales from the Front Row. But uh, the first one, all that matters is the music, because a lot of these people, I love them tremendously, and we know they're tremendously flawed people. Yeah. They're tremendously flawed. So I just like to say, all that matters is the music. I know when I met Michael Jackson, he was wonderful. He was amazing. Yeah. When I met whoever they were, ma- I remember I had Whitney a boss. Houston. Whitney Houston. Meeting Whitney. Yeah. I, wait, I, I, can't, I can't curse on this channel, right? That's correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, because I, <laughs> I, I I got a curse of this witness. Let me see if I can even find the picture. Uh, although you may have it. So we're we're someplace, and uh, there's Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. So uh, let me see. Can I find it? Because it, it's worth it. Uh, we were at a Grammy party of some sort. Mm-hmm. No, it's not there. Come on, Whitney. You know I'm looking for you, Danny. <laughs> uh, you know you sometimes you have just too many pictures in your phone. Oh man, understood. Uh, so we but, were uh but you were at a Grammy party? What what year is this? Oh, this is uh You had hair. Uh, I, I had hair. Right, here's I, the picture. I saw the picture. Is this the picture? I this saw the picture. That's about? the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had your so little you look black at that picture. picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you look at that picture. We look as sweet and as cool as can be, but this is how that picture really went. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm Whitney and this is Carlton. Blah blah blah. You tell that mother F, blah blah. I don't give a F and blah blah. Huh? Sure, baby. Click. Okay, thank you, baby. Thank you. F that. F that. I'm like, ooh. Oh my God. Get away from. This is long before Bobby Brown. Long Whitney before. was ghetto. Yeah. Whitney would yeah. fight you in the street. Yeah. Whitney yeah. was ghetto. Yeah. That, that. Yeah. But she yeah. was sweet to me. Yeah, you know, man. I, yeah, I a lot a of people. You know, here, here, here's what I know. You know, people from Jersey have, have told me this long before. Is that you know the world was like when she married Bobby Brown. You know, we were like uh, astounded because she was our queen, and and yeah. they were like, you know, Arista, you know, Clive Davis, they Cleaned did all her that up. imaging. That that was yeah. all, but 
you know, yeah. bought, they they were soulmates. They were really f- cut from the same cloth. And what yeah, we thought yeah. was like, there's no way she should get with Bobby, but she was already there. But you know what else? I, I remember thinking it's kind of like <laughs> when Jermaine Dupree got with Janet. I, I got a shot. I mean, I ain't Denzel, but ah, damn. Man, give me Janet's phone number. Is it too late? Put Janet on the phone. Janet! Huh? Huh? You know so when Whitney got with Bobby, I got a shot. You know so I wouldn't have even considered it before now. You know what I'm saying? So I remember that's how I was thinking. I couldn't believe that boy got on TV the other night and oh said he cheated God. on Janet. Did you see the Janet Jackson? Oh, did you I see didn't the documentary? See I, I, I saw the, you know, the teaser, but I didn't want But at some point, Jermaine Dupree says, yeah, well, I was cheating. I was putting on, a, on Janet Jackson? Really, mm-hmm. son? You may be one of the dumbest Negroes in captivity. You got Janet? It gets shut down. We don't want to talk to nobody else. How do you mess that up? Look at you. Look at you, son. But anyway, God bless him. Brother Jimmy, very talented <laughs> cat. But that, that's just man talk. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing, man? I don't know, remember uh, Mary J. Blige having oh Kendu Isaacs? Yeah. You got Mary J? What are you doing, man? You ride that off into the sunset. That's you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't, right. We men, we make some... Boy, we is, we make some foolish choices. I've yes, been witness. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. been witness. You know. Oh and, uh, my goodness! Now I have to change the subject. Okay. Uh oh, come on, change it up. <laughs> change it up. <laughs> Tell me about Liberty Heights, man, and you playing James Brown, circa nineteen fifty four. Okay. Come on with that. You ready? Yep. I'm gonna show Movie you everybody. Liberty everybody. Heights, baby. Barry Levinson film. Everybody, listen. Just understand how the universe works and gives us all of our blessings. Yeah. As you well know, the first place my mother ever took me was at the Apollo Theater to see James Brown. Started a lifelong love affair with the man. Met him countless times. He rode me around the limo. I got a great James Brown story. But some, I got a million James Brown stories. Mm-hmm. So it's September 9th, 1994. And uh, James Brown is preparing to, he's going to come to the, come to the Apollo that night. It's 12 midnight, 12.30. So I'm at the theater because my buddy works. Excuse me, works there, Kendall Brown. He's like, yeah, man, we're breaking everything down. We're getting ready. Your man's coming in tonight. You going to be here? I said, nah, man, I'm not. Because by this time, James Brown was sort of phoning it in. I'm not coming to the show tonight. I don't want to taint any more of my memories. Yeah, you say that all the time, but you still show up at the last minute. Nah, I'm not coming tonight. Something's going to happen tonight. I'm going to get a date with Beyonce. Halle Berry going to call and decide she want to marry me. Something will keep me from coming to the show tonight. Right. Well, my mother passes away that night. Mm. I'm devastated, to say mm. the least. You know, go through it. It's a couple of years later, and I'm praying to Amar, God bless you, rest in peace, blah, 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 blah. And my phone rings. Hello, Carlton? Yes, Carlton Smith? Yes. This is Harry Weinger, uh, Universal. Could you play James Brown in a movie? What? Yeah, you know, but we, he talked to us about this. We said, could you play James Brown in a movie? Um, we, we know how you perform. You have the energy to do it. The guy that's trying to get to do it now is exhausted after one take. Could you? I said, yeah, I could play him in a movie. He said, okay, great. Well, this is what you got to do, blah, 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 blah. Get the tape, make a tape with you lip syncing these songs and send it to the production office and, and lost it. They need it by next Monday. I said, you got it. Jerry, I went and got a, got a James Brown wig. I had a bow tie that James Brown gave me off his neck. Wow. Had a little tuxedo, rented a little studio. And my buddy had a camera and I filmed myself doing a whole James Brown show. Now, every other day they're calling, hey, we didn't get the tape yet. I said, you need it by Monday, it'll be there. Monday morning, I flew to Los Angeles. With Gina Fredericks, God bless her. We flew to Los Angeles as he pulled, because I'm going to drop it off in person. As we pull up in front of, uh, of the office in, in Rodale Drive someplace, a white van pulls up right next to our car playing Try Me by James Brown. Wow. I said, what, what, are, the, what are the odds? I said, oh, man, I'm going to get this. A chill on a, I'm, that, that's what that means. And every time I tried to see who was driving, he would move up. Kept telling mm. who would move up. I'm like, okay. So I go upstairs to the production office. She said, yeah, I said, I'm here to see Mary Lou Eels. Who are you? I said, uh, tell her James Brown is here. So she comes out and she goes, are you Carlton's yet? She goes, but you don't live here. You live in New York. What are you doing here? I said, I really want this role. So I came to bring you the tape. Oh, my God. Come in and sit down. So I walk into her office and I plop down in the chair. You know, getting off the plane, the long ride. We didn't even stop at the hotel. We went straight there. Right. I plop down in the chair. Knock over every CD in her CD rack behind me, <laughs> except one. James Brown. <laughs> she goes, oh, my God. It was a James Brown CD, Roots of a Revolution, lime green cover. Wow. I said, yeah, this, that's been pretty much happening all day. 
And I got the role, you know? And then uh, 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 yeah, they, the movie came out. I met James Bond again backstage at B.B. King's. And he said, man, that movie was out of sight, out of sight, down in Baltimore. Man, the way they went back and forth between me and you versus me, then it was you, then it was me, then it was you. I'm like, he thinks that's him. And somebody told me he thought the faraway shots were, were, were him and the close-ups were me. Oh, so my I'm just gosh. like, yes, Mr. Brown, you're right. They went back and forth between me and you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know they did. I know they did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's just, most oh, people man. never even get to see their idols yes. perform live. I got to see mine, meet mine, be the first man to portray him in a film. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me the universe isn't full of blessings. It, it really is, is man. You Absolutely. know, you mentioned last week or the other day that you had Chris Jasper on your yeah. show. Oh, yeah. And I, rem I remember uh, going into James Bond's dressing room. I had, I think I told you this, I had in this suit, but there's a whole story behind that. But you had he, on James I, I, Brown, James Brown suit. No, no, I had on a suit that, 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 it was a, it was a very nice suit. But I'd been through some changes to get it, which is a whole other story gotcha. for my mother. Uh, and uh, I'm standing at the door, but he's, he's under the dryer admonishing his band. And he looks at it, he goes, you mighty clean there, brother. Come sit next to me. And I'm like, oh, shit. I go sit next to him. And I went into a black, I can't remember what he said to me. He asked me about school and how I was doing. And we're talking. All of a sudden, he looks beyond me. He goes, oh, get out the dice. Get out the dice. Here come the Ozzy brothers. And they sit on the other side of him. It's me, James Brown, Ronald Ozzy, O'Kelly. I think that might have been it, or it might have been another one. And I remember thinking, yes, I was 17, but I remember thinking, I am breathing rare air here, man. These Absolutely. are legends Absolutely. that I'm blessed to sit here amongst, man. So it was just, it, it was, that was an amazing moment. And there's so many amazing moments. So getting to portray him on film is, is just fantastic, man. I, I can't, you know. But but not only, not only did you portray him on film, but uh, you know after he passed away, uh, just soon after he passed away, you were asked oh, yes. to substitute for him at BB King's. Yes, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, how how many that's days it. after? Because he passed away on Christmas, and you got the call. It was the New Year's show. Yeah, yeah. The by, New by, by by, I can't remember his last name, but Chris. God bless Chris. He used to we do booking. At BB King's, he was mm -hmm. a Carlton. I know what this would mean to you. So we're gonna get Chaka Khan the headlines. So we got somebody coming in, but uh, you're gonna do all the James Brown stuff. And man, we had a a mighty good time. And I got to represent the Godfather, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that means the world to me. I uh, there's a part of me that wishes I was singing with the band, but because they're sort of scattered and they're not they're not doing what they could have been doing. They could have been like the Duke Ellington Orchestra, but. It but, fell apart. You know, Duke, Duke, Duke had Mercer though. He was pouring into his son though before he left. You a know what I mean? Point. I don't think good James point. was pouring into anybody to keep that legacy. Uh, other than James, you know, man, you know what? I have James. all this. I have all this memorabilia because I used to collect papers and news. I cut out everything. The member we're doing an exhibit, a display, mm -hmm. and I have a Jet magazine cover. When you want to talk about cancel culture, it's unbelievable. It's that Duke Ellington on the cover, and it's about a book he wrote, his son Mercer wrote. Mm -hmm. And Mercer said, this, it says this on the cover, my father, superstitious, uh, was a womanizer, hated the F word. This is on the cover. Can you imagine that? Of that could jet. never happen. Yeah, it wouldn't. Of Jack. Mm -hmm. That can never happen nowadays. Do you know about all my, you know about my member view, the posters and all that stuff? You were telling me you had a collection of posters. And uh, I think- I have right a... here that I can show you. Yeah, I used to take them down on street corners. Wow. And, and whoever was coming to town, I would, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I would just, I just wanted to collect. My mother's like, boy, what, what are we going to do with all this? <laughs> I said, Ma, it's music. Could I please keep it? And I still have them to this day. Damn, there are about 200 of them. I'm trying to find wow. a really good one to show you. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember those. Oh, yeah. I got, uh, I got Walter and Eddie to sign it. I got Gerald to sign it. The sad thing is I've had them all for years, and I, and I never thought to, to get them signed. I could have oh. so many of these signed by so many of them. So now it's a race against time. Yeah. And for yeah. the most part, it's been a beautiful experience. I've only had a couple of weird experiences. Um, Because, you know, most entertainers, they get off, they get out of the limo, they get out of the plane, into the limo, to the hotel. Maybe they'll go do the sound check, but that's right. it, hotel, to the show, 
back to the limo, back to the hotel. So they don't see the posters that have been around town for three weeks True. promoting them. True. So to see it 40 years later is mind blowing for them. That's and true. you know, it's funny when I first started taking them, getting them signed, they would trip out. One of the Ozzy brothers said to me, I said, would you sign this? He goes, Brother, people usually give me a napkin or a piece of paper. <laughs> you got a concert poster from 1976? Yeah, I'm going to sign it. Right. And then they asked to take pictures. So early on, I used to be like, why are you taking a picture? You don't have this? And one of the guys in May said, man, look here, young blood. We was out there chasing women, getting high. We didn't think to keep anything. We thought this shit was going to last forever. Right. You know what That's I'm saying? So true. they don't have this stuff. So it's been wonderful. It's only been a couple of experience it with people, I'm just like, come on, man, how long does it take for you to sign your name? And I I got eight posters of you from over 40 years ago. That don't warrant a little bit of respect, you know? <laughs> exactly I, right. I'll write you later, I'll tell you who, who, who those people <laughs> were, but I was I was so disappointed, man, oh my you know? Gosh. Text yeah, me that. man. Yeah, Text yeah, me yeah. Hey, if you want to, we'll blow their names up right now on your show. <laughs> you got the platform, brother. Go ahead. One, two, three. One of them was Curtis Blow. Curtis didn't sign a poster? Well, he finally did, but after he had me, my wife and daughter wait damn near 12 hours in a back room full of every rapper that ever rapped the lyric and all this weed smoke and just, it's like, yo, Curtis, come on, man. I got, I got, come on, man. I got so, all these punks. Because he was always is, on somebody else's show. Right. So I got, I would get him to, uh, do I have one here? He finally signed it, but it's like, come on, man. Curtis. And then, uh, Curtis, this is me and you. Wow. Okay. Right before he went inside Madison Square Garden to open the show for Bob Marley and the Whalers and the Commodores. Wow. Frankie Crocker would do a pivotal show. That's rap, yeah. R&B, and reggae yeah. for the yeah. first time in New York. He finally got him on the side after making me wait and put me through all sorts of changes. The other one, believe it or not, was Eddie LaVert. Eddie made you wait. Come on. No, Eddie, Eddie ignored me and my daughter. Just Walter signed him wonderfully. Eddie ignored us outright. It was painfully embarrassing. I was I was so disappointed. Then a few months later, they came to the Apollo Fit. I said, I'm gonna try him again. I'm gonna try him again. This time he did sign him. I'll send you the pictures and everything. Right. And right. then in the worst one of them all, man, uh, because I, I had some history with these guys, the twins and the whispers dissed me horribly, horribly. The two, the two, Leo, yeah, the one yeah. in the middle was great. Yeah. And I got pictures I took with them. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, back in the day, uh, I had a large VHS collection. I used to collect footage. So this is before YouTube. Yeah. If somebody was coming to town, I'd put together all their performances on tape and bring them to them. And most guys were very happy to get that. The whispers were ecstatic. They came back a year later. One of the twins said, man, on that tape, my wife was an 18 year old college student in the audience. I forgot this where we watch this every day, me and my daughters. It's mind blowing. So mm -hmm. we were cool. When they came back again, we took some great pictures together. But this night, they didn't want to be bothered. And I got 10 whispers posters Man. of them on shows with every so it was, but for every whispers, Eddie LeBert Curtis blow, there's a Patty LaBelle who's getting out the limo. Her bodyguard sees me and says, Look, she can't be bothered with that. And Patty looks over his shoulder and goes, Oh no, I'm gonna sign every one of these. She's looking at him, look at my hair. Oh my <laughs> God, did I wear that? You know, so there's some there's some beautiful moments in there. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's 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 the crazy moments that sting the most because we we love these people so much. Definitely. We don't want to think that they're a holes. You know what That's I'm saying? Right. That's right. And you're right. It's a it's a race against time. I mean, you know, we're looking at uh, Gladys Knight. We're looking at uh, Diana Ross. We're looking at Stevie Wonder. You know, yeah, Stevie's yeah. having some health issues, and you know, we I didn't know that absolute best. You know, but it's like, gee, yeah. me, you know that that will definitely be an end of an era. And yeah, for real. We still got, you know. I got a phenomenal Smokey Robinson post. I would love to have him sign. But it's a matter of catching him at the right time. And now we got Kobe. You know what I'm saying? So don't nobody want to be up on nobody but so much. So uh, exactly. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing exhibits because like again, this stuff doesn't exist any place else in the world. And it's our history. It's our black music history. That's true. That's true. And it's print media, which doesn't exist at all you know so uh, we're gonna now, make it happen brother jerry now this is going to be uh you're going to showcase these posters in your second book then right oh uh, no the the book is going to be the ticket stubs and the stories of the show gotcha yeah gotcha. the posters that's going to be an actor i want to do exhibit pop up exhibits I, like i said i have so many it's, i have so much memorabilia it's unbelievable man unbelievable here's, so here's one word for you um uh -huh. you know especially before you take it out on the street and that is insurance you got it yeah. you know you got collector's items right there you know that's but you know what i'm wondering 
but but you know, uh, I would say they're priceless. What do you know? Absolutely, but you know, what I mean, so but when it's you, something when you got to do. You got to you got to get insurance on it. You, you yeah, have to get yeah. insurance because I mean, what are you gonna do? You know, you take it You're out right. on the road. You got two hundred prime posters. Forget about yeah, it, man. Yeah. You're right. It is Black History. And black history. You know, Tay, Tay and I were talking about that. So we we got we got to get that rock and roll, and we will. You know, it's funny. I have a I have a when I say things that don't exist, I have a, a show program, which you can't find any of the James Brown Black Caesar show, 1973. Yeah. He signed it to me in pencil. Then yeah. he signed it again a month or a year or whatever later in pen backstage at Madison Square Garden. I'm standing outside the dress room. A lot of people milling about. I see a little lady standing. I said, "Hi, how you doing?" She goes, "Hi." So you like James Brown? <laughs> she went. She's laughing. Yeah. You, what's your favorite James Brown record? All of them. Okay, all right, great, cool. Chit chat a little bit more. They find a call for her. I said, my name is Carlton. She goes, my name is Susie Brown. I'm James Brown's mother. What? <laughs> what? And she signed it. So I got a show program, two signatures from James Brown and James Brown's mother. Some of these things don't exist. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and we don't acknowledge our heroes. Yeah, you're right. The way the way they do, the no, way right. they you, should. No, you're right about that. I mean, because the Beatles are alive and well. You know what I mean? Come on, man. You I'm know, telling you, the Rolling uh, Stones are alive and well. The Who is alive and well, and they are always going to be alive and well. That's just you, absolutely I, right. I, that's the truth. I'll tell you something. Even I hope people. I hope I'm not taking you down the street, but you know that's no, no, no. no that, take me truth. there. You look here. Truth. Look here, Charlie Watts from the from the Rolling Stones passed away. That's cool. great. God, God bless him. And man, they went in on Facebook, social media, blah, 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 blah. Dennis Thomas. Of Cool in the Gang. As yeah. original, a member of Cool in yeah. the Gang, yeah. as Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stone passes yeah. away, and ain't nobody say nothing about it. Okay? Nobody said nothing. I was I was telling, yeah. uh, I, I was I was blessed to meet Tavares. Phenomenal yeah. guys with at least 15 records. Yeah. That's a career. That's great. Okay. They could run through Harlem naked on fire. Nobody would know who they were. <laughs> Nobody knows their name. No, right. uh, I, I was telling somebody the other night, in the history of Columbia, CBS Records, that conglomerate, yeah. Barbara Streisand and Bob Dylan, blah, 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 blah. The first 45 to go platinum. Now, back in the day, you had to sell 500,000 of an album and a, to go gold, yeah. a million for platinum. Before 45, you had to sell a million to go gold, mm -hmm. two million to go platinum. The first two 45s in the history of that company to go platinum, Kiss and Say Goodbye, yeah. by the Manhattans, mm -hmm. and Disco Lady by Johnny Taylor. Two black men who, you know, if they walked yeah. into that building, nobody would even know who they were. Yeah. How do we not acknowledge our heroes? That's true. We don't, we don't throw them up like well, they should, you know? Well, Frankie and, Beverly is yet to win a Grammy. Come on. Come on. I mean, you know, so that's again, again, that's a whole nother street or a whole nother episode. <laughs> but, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we get but you know what I will say? Show, you you know? know what I love? You know what I love, Jerry? Frankie has voice issues. Now, but when you go see him, we sing all his songs for him. And mm. I love that. That's the least you can give Frankie. That's cool. Go see Frankie Bevan the Mays concert. Mm. Everybody say, it's like, Frankie, we got you. The yeah. last time I saw that was when Eddie Kendrick's health was failing him and he was pretty much dying mm -hmm. at the Apollo. And everybody sang just my magic. Eddie, don't worry about it. We got you. Start the music. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah. You know you what know, I'm saying? I saw, I saw footage of that. I saw footage. Yeah, footage man. He yeah. was about this thing. He looked like the That's number right. 11. Exactly. He was so skinny. God That's bless correct. him, you know? Yeah. You know, I yeah. first saw I first saw Frankie Bell and Mays open up for Parliament Funkadelic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's his... These two don't even go together. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but they do, though. Oh, they do, though. Okay. You know what I mean? They do. You know, I mean, P-Funk P -Funk is retroactive, man. And Frankie Beverly and Mays could just, just But this was 77. It. Frankie Beverly and uh, Mays are just coming out. Let me tell you something. I, I can put that on, like, right now, and it'll flow. Both. Okay. Okay. I'll give you that. Well, you know <laughs> what I meant? Like, for me, P-Funk, when Bootsy opened for them, that yeah. made... And then I saw Showtime with a Barcase open for P-Funk. Well, yeah, you yeah, and the Isley Brothers, the the Isley Brothers yeah. opening up for P-Funk. You know, but I, but yeah. Frankie, when they get in that zone, give them three songs in. Good point. Good point. Good point. And, and <laughs> it's burning. It, 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 but it'll set you up for the madness that's about to come. You may <laughs> leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Once <laughs> George Clinton started his foolishness, I first saw George Clinton. They weren't even people. They were Funkadelic. You ready for this bill? I, I can't remember my sister's birthday, what I had for breakfast yesterday. But this time, was, I can remember. It was Funkadelic. Uh, 
uh, um, the Natural Four and the Jimmy Castor Bunch opened the show. Okay? This okay. is fucking done when they had standing on the verge of getting it on. That was yeah. the biggest record. Yeah. He came on stage in a sheet. He was naked yeah. and had these big Donald Duck feet. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell is this? Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Man. <laughs> I, I, That's right. Those, those memories, I wish I could put them on DVD because I saw some amazing shows at the Apollo Theater. Amazing. You know? There's, there's just amazing shows running around in the 70s. If you were a black funk act or rhythm and, and blues or soul, it, it was yeah. just on. You know, that, the that people you'd get on one bill. Herbie but Hancock. What? Herbie Hancock with, man, you know, a funk man. band. You know what I mean? Come on. Man, the Headhunters. The Headhunters. Headhunters, Ron- Barquets. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Was Ron Carter on bass? And the headhunters, do I have that wrong? No, I don't think Ron Carter was on base with the headhunters. I'm, I'm going to give you his name in a minute because uh, his Paul Jackson, because his, oh! his, uh, his son, Paul Jackson Jr., the guitarist, the session legend, uh, but his father, Paul Jackson, on base with the headhunters. And that's who that's who played the lick uh, for the love of money. Oh, did he? Did he with the OJ? Yeah, Paul yeah that was Paul Jackson. Ooh, yes, yes, baby. yes. That was a yeah. funky opening lick, man. Yeah, yeah. It's done. Oh, it's man. done right now. I mean, that, you put it on right now, it's over. <laughs> Good point. Good. You're right about that. You're right about that, man. Oh, these we, we've seen some of the... Who, who, are some, who, are, who are your favorites, Jay? Let me ask you. Oh who are your favorites gosh. that got you into music? Well, Stevie, There's always for, that first thing. It was Stevie. Stevie, first of all. You know, I mean, uh, Science Hill delivered. I wore the record out. You know, uh, My Sharia more... Um, superstition, what in the world is that? You know, the clavinet just like kicking, like, you know, I don't know. You, you know what anything. the story behind that is? Tell he me. says he went he went to see Sly and the Family Stone at the LA Forum. He said, when they wanted to thank you for letting me be myself, the vibrations, he said, I got to do a record like that. And if you listen to it, you can sing thank you for letting me be myself That's to superstition. It. That's, it. That's it. He That's said, it. That he said that got him. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I can, uh, don't get me started on Sly, man. You know, I had a boss at Prelude Records uh, you think you can write some songs? You can't write no damn songs, Carlton. You're surprised. I'm gonna take you to meet a real songwriter. I'm taking me to a real songwriter. So I go in and we go to the Sheridan Hotel on on 57th Avenue. We're walking in and clearly we're headed towards this table in the back where these two gentlemen are. As I get close, I realize, oh my God, that's Bobby Womack. And I start flipping because I was a Bobby Womack fan. So I'm standing there talking, yes, Mr. Womack, got my big boom box and play my song, Mr. Womack. And it was about a few seconds before I even looked at the other guy. And I'm like, huh. Oh, Sly! It was Sly! Because <laughs> Sly had been released into Bobby's care for rehab and they were touring uh, together. Gotcha. And I remember I said to Sly, I said, Sly, you on your latest album, uh, there's a there's a the third cut on the second side. It's amazing, blah, 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 blah. He looked at me like I told him it was raining in Maine. He had Man. no idea what I was talking about. Man. Warner Brothers had just thrown the album out that he didn't even know it was out. I'm like, oh man. Wow. That, that's now, back, a, back on the right track was one of his best comeback albums. I don't know where he was mentally, emotionally, but it just from needed beginning to be to mixed end, a little better. Like, if it's not adding up, it takes all kinds. Remember who you are. Do I know what I'm talking about, Jerry? Am I with you? Come on, man. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> come that, on. That, it just needed a slightly better mix, man. Yeah. It could have been. You know, yeah, but the fact I, you know, I first heard it on vinyl, so I'm I'm having it up on nine anyway, and it was just okay. up in the speaker. So you okay. know, I was it was the vibe, it wasn't the science of it, you know. And I'm and like, wait. man, I hadn't heard from uh, Sly in years, and it's in just a minute. He put out one. He put out one other album after that on Warner Brothers that was called Ain't But the One Way. And Ain't I was singing this. I was singing this song. There's a song on it, which is what I was talking to him about, and I'm like, this was not a song written for this album. Mm-hmm. This is something he was going to the studio every day and just fooling around warming up on, and the engineer decided to roll tape. It's 40 seconds long, and he's basically singing about himself, about how he had it and blew it all. Really? He said, but only his mama knows his name. She calls him Sylvester. I'm like, oh, my. He didn't write that for this album. Wow. And that's what I was talking to him about, but he had no idea. I'm sending you that track. You have Please to hear it. it. It is beyond deep, you know? Please do. Please do. I got a couple of uh, unreleased things by him, man. I got some unreleased stuff in here that's, yeah, just things yeah. people have given to me over the years that are just uh, yeah, uh, amazing. So I got, I got to get. We gonna get this Black History off the ground. I got to pull you in because you know this. I need like minded souls and kindred Definitely. spirits. So Definitely. we'll figure out how you can be a part of this also. Because Jerry, I got the memorabilia, man. You oh, know, man. Why well, don't I have the memories? I don't have the memorabilia. No problem. But I tell I you gotta what. See. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's just 
you know, just all of that music. And again, you know, I'll take it back to the conversation that we were having earlier. In fact, is that if you are seven, eight, nine years old and your older cousins and your uncles are flowing through all of this madness, I mean, you're going through the Manhattans, you're going through the OJs, you're going through the Ohio players. You, I mean, you're just in all of this stuff. And then circa 19... 95 that say this is the new hit right there other than mint condition got to give it up for mint condition yeah but yeah really yeah, ain't yeah nobody else riding it like that wait wait you know, hold on I, mean, I gotta on. stop that there's a guy in turkey turkish guy sings of the band every show he does he sings pretty brown eyes mm. in turkey mm -hmm. i went up to him after i said you do know that you and i are the only two people in this building <laughs> that know the song you're singing you know what i'm saying exactly that know the song and look, I want to show you this because I have all this memorabilia from back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, this is April 16th, 1978. Oh, Here's your man. boy. I used to cut everything out, man. Look, I got the whole, this is the actual article. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? Stevie, mm -hmm. huh? What a lot of people don't remember is it was a long wait for songs in the kid life. It was taking forever for that album to come out. That's and right. Motown actually had a campaign Two more months, three more months. It's right. almost ready. They would put all these ads. I got all of them leading up to, you know what Rolling. I'm saying? Wow. So uh, I may have some doubles on some things, man. So uh, I got you. I got you. We should talk about that because I know, and 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 we need to do a part two at some point because I'd be I know more you, than happy to. I know you're on schedule, man. But you know what? What does it take to write a song or write an, an album, a suite like Songs in the Key of Life? And 40 years later is just as precious when you put on love's the need of love today and you drop the needle and it's just as precious as the first time that you heard it. What level of genius is that? That's where we you know, you're not following. Thing. You're not following trends. You're not you're not resorting to slang or whatever is hip or hot at the time. You're writing from what's really within your heart. You're writing because. It, you know, it seems to be the things you not the, so much that you want to say, but you have to say. See, nowadays, artists would do anything to get paid. Come we come from an era in which artists would do anything to be heard. I got to right. say this, you know, to look at you having done nothing. Come mm. on, man, what that says. You mm. know, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, uh, uh, he, he had to do it. Now, now I, tell, I say this all the time. A lot of people forget his follow-up was songs in, uh, was uh, She Could Like This Journey of Plants. Sure, Stevie, sure, sure. no, 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 Stevie, sure. you know what I'm saying? But, 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 but here's the thing. had to do that. But, when you, but, but see, that's that's the artistic thing. It was just, to me, it was just like, so you got you have uh, songs in the key of life, you have secret life of plants, okay? You see that follow-up because he's an artist and he's speaking out of expression. Prince did the same thing with Purple Rain. Oh, and then and Around then the World backwards. in a Day. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? you can't. But you so, know, and that's where Michael messed up. He kept trying to recreate Thriller. You ain't gonna get that again. That's not gonna happen again. So just right. make the record that's in you. That's like right. I put out this album. I put out this album for about that same three bedroom apartment I, I was living in when I was fifteen and a half. Yeah. Sixteen thirty four Lexus and Apple. That's my album on, on Timian Records. Yeah. And it's, it's it's in all the soul circles. It's 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 critically acclaimed. Not yeah. here in the U.S., but you know. Yeah. So now I'm like, it okay, is. it's been a minute. My next record. Will they accept it? Are they going to enjoy it? All I can do is write was that. I'm not going to try to recreate that. If anything, I'm almost, the record company, everything they do is very similar. It's almost like Motown. It's like, come on, I don't want to do the same exact thing again. Correct. So all you can do is put out the record that you have in you. That's and as long right. as you're happy with it, right. that's it. So I'm sure Stevie wrote that. Hey, this is what it is. That's now, what it is. But you know, there there was there was magic on that album. I mean, you know, um, I wish I could come back as a flower. Come on, man. With um, there uh, was Sarita. a thing, but the marketing of it because it was a soundtrack for some film that nobody saw, so right? For, send when you love, send when you love is brilliant. That could have been on, on, on Hotter in July, you exactly. know. Out the uh, park. Um, out the park. uh, what you would call it? Uh, I'm just gonna mention somebody in, in their next album. I don't know, it'll, it'll come but, back. But listen to Come Back as a Flower when you're on your way to your next appointment, listen to that one and hear Sarita lull you into a peaceful, serene place. It's crazy. And God they keep him. that motif up, and he's just rounding those thirds, man. And it's just like, okay, Steve, I'm check that I out. got you. I got you. Know, I got you, you, know my, you know my problem with the, with the TV show Unsung? Tell is me. that the people that, that you're highlighting, they're not unsung, man. Right. We know who David Ruff and Sly and Family right. Stone, James <laughs> Brown, uh, Marvin. We know these people are. Unsung, right. you want to do Sarita. 
Yeah. Michael Henderson, yeah. DJ Rogers, that's uns Johnny Bristol, that's unsung. So that, that's that's a problem I've always said. Next week on Unsung, the Fat Boys. Really? You know what I'm saying? We know these people. You know what I'm saying? We know right. John Dellinger, who was driving the car. You know right. what I'm saying? That guy is unsung. You know? Wait, let me because I'm supposed to do this. Um. Uh, yeah, man. Radio, yeah, radio. yeah, we can we can wrap it up, but listen, Lou, we can wrap it up. And we, we got to do this again, all, Jerry. I'm just talking it. to you, bro. We're gonna do <laughs> it, man. This is you know, this is us, ladies and gentlemen, having our own personal conversation. <laughs> so grateful you could drop in on us, but this is Carlton Jamel Smith. Go to CarltonJamelSmith.com. You see the banner up above. Check out his wonderful music. Check man, out his I life story. This? And you can say whatever you need to say, brother. So to all the people watching Jerry B, he's a good man, a good brother, a genuine heart. That's all you want from somebody. But everybody out there watching this, please know there are blessings that are there for you. Just do the right thing. Put good energy into the world, no matter at what personal cause. That's there right. are blessings. Don't let this COVID, don't let all this other stuff bring you down. Think That's positive. Right. Put mm. forth good energy, please. The, the universe has so many blessings for us. We just have to be in tune and pay attention. That's I'm right. telling you, people are already talking about, oh, I hate 2022. Trust me, you'd hate it a lot more if you weren't here to see it. That's There's a whole right. lot of people wish they were here to see it. That's so you right. love every day that God gives you, that the universe gives you, and make the most of it, man. God bless each and every one of y'all watching this, okay? Word all right. right, that's that's all I want to say, Jerry. Oh, that's beautiful, okay? man. That's an excellent way to say it. Carlton Jumel Smith. He's an entree musician. My name is Jerry B. I am an entree musician, but the most important thing is so are you. We will see you again next time. God bless. I'll talk to you, Jerry. Peace All out. Right. Okay.